what we've managed to do is actually we've managed to piece together the entire genome of a pathogen that caused the plague of Justinian. So this was a plague that hit Rome in 540 AD and spread out throughout entire Europe, killing 50 million, up to 100 million people. And we've determined now that it's actually a form of plague, bubonic or septicemic plague. Uh, and we can make now direct comparisons to later epidemics of plague. For example, we know the Black Death hit Europe again 800 years later. And if we now we, having these two ancient genomes and having modern day genomes, like the current outbreak in Madagascar, we can compare and contrast them over time. And what we see with the plague of Justinian is that we had this epidemic that probably erupted in China, traveled the Silk Road into Europe, decimated Europe, um, and then went extinct and disappeared. And then fast forward 800 years, we have another epidemic that seems to have traveled the same route, erupted in China, traveled along the Silk Road, it, Silk Road into Europe, and wiped out again 50 million people, um, but then was disseminated across the globe. So the Black Death, the dissemination of the plague was much more successful in the Black Death time. So the Justinian went extinct, the Black Death sort of maintained itself to present day. And so the question is, they both killed 50 to 100 million people. What was inherent in those genomes that made them so deadly, as opposed to outbreaks that we see today? And so that's obviously where we need to look now. Again, for a couple different reasons. One is that we can actually compare these ancient plagues with modern day plagues and try to make sense as to why the ones in the past were so deadly, whereas ones that outbreak today have much less mortality, lower mortality rates. So why was it that the plagues in the past killed uh, 50 million people, whereas today it's on the order of a few thousand a year? And so having access to an ancient genome allows us to actually pinpoint the differences and say, can we understand the physiology of those differences in the bug? Did this particular change make it really nasty? Or did this change actually attenuate it and make it less nasty? I think one of the most important uh, implications that come from the study is we know that this plague was an epidemic that came out and then went extinct. And then we, we fast forward 800 years and we know the Black Death again was another epidemic of the same bug that came out and then disseminated across the globe. So the point is that there are rodents still today that harbor this infection that can continue to emerge. And so by understanding how those things happen, what those changes are in the ancient bugs that caused them to be so deadly is critical for understanding how future epidemics could happen and can in theory be controlled. What challenges did you see? Everything that, that comes from skeletal material, accessing uh, you know, a needle in the proverbial haystack uh, is challenging. These are tiny little DNA fragments. We've managed, again, using these, these novel technologies to pull all the little tiny pieces out, stitch them together to be able to access and understand uh, these genomes of the past. And that's quite a challenge on a technological standpoint. Um, but allows us really to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the past. Many additional steps that we can take. One is obviously we can continue to look at epidemics in the past, uh, which opens up a, you know, a new avenue of research, which I think, I think is critical. But if you remember that the, the pathogen only represents one half of the equation, we're the other half. And so if we can study you know, the genomes of humans before these epidemics struck and after, we can really start to understand what is it inherent in our genome that makes us, in one case, susceptible, highly susceptible. Remember, half the population died, and the other half survived. And so there are obviously um, protective alleles as well. So can we discern those differences, those that are susceptibility alleles and those that are uh, protective alleles? And is that important for future research and disease in general?